The Secret Door to Success by Florence Scoville Shin. In this particular conversation, we're going to go deeper into the last conversation we had, the last video in which we talked about putting off the former conversation, which was a discussion based on Neville's information regarding past assumptions, beliefs, and programming, really, that is revealed by our inner conversations. The Secret Door to Success, it is found within. So much of Florence's work has been discussed from the perspective of, like Neville, the world within. The idea that you have the power to experience what you want to experience in life by realizing that the power is within. Through the choice of your words, inner conversations, what you say when you talk to yourself, how you interpret reality from within. Inspiration is found within. Intuition is also from within, guiding you to the fulfillment and the experience that you desire to reveal, which is an externalization of what is within the mind, reveal in this five sensory experience. We're going to talk about it from three perspectives the road to success, inspiration and intuition and non-resistance. She says, The road to success is a straight and narrow path. It is a road of loving absorption, of undivided attention. Loving absorption and undivided attention. The question then becomes, what are we giving our attention to? Or more accurately put, where is our attention being assigned based on our assumptions within? Much of her work is based on the concept of affirmations, the idea that the inner conversations can be changed by utilizing affirmative statements, statements that resonate and impress the subconscious to bring forth more of those inner conversations and thus experience the reflection of those inner conversations on the screen of space, five sensory reality. When we identify what we are communicating to ourselves within about success or the end result, the destination, then we can reveal to ourselves if we are on the pathway, which is a straight pathway to the destination, ideally, or one that is riddled with confusion, which then experiences itself, the confusion within, as outer world confusion. Now, when she's referring to loving absorption, all of this is done from a place of flow, understanding, and realizing that what you truly desire is brought forth unto you and through you via what you truly love. And what you truly love is where your attention is going. If our attention goes on the former conversation, then we have the power within to observe our mental chatter regarding those experiences on the screen of space and change how we believe those experiences to be using affirmations. For example, say you decide that you are going to create a business. Hunches, inspirations, and intuition guides you from within to pick a certain product in which you offer it to the marketplace. As soon as you pick the product, you find yourself excited about it, ready to get started. The next day rolls around and you find yourself experiencing internal conflict confusion, and doubt regarding what you know you have to do, the plans that were received within via intuition. And you know you have to do these things, which contributes to the realization of what you desire to experience, which is the business success. We then reflect for a moment and say, what are we interpreting about ourselves in relation to what we know we have to do? In other words, what is our mental conversation? Perhaps the mental conversation you have is 
I never seem to get myself to do what I really want to do. I have difficulty with this. A lot of people have difficulty with this. Through the revelation of that inner conversation, you have identified your assumption, your belief. We ask ourselves, what would it look like if it was true? How would we assume ourselves to be in relation to the things we know we have to do that contribute to the realization of our success? We then find, through inspiration and intuition within, the accurate meaning, the accurate assumption. And the accurate assumption may go something like this. I realize that more so each day, I find myself automatically choosing what I love to do, knowing that everything that I know I have to do is what I love to do. And thus, I find myself lovingly absorbed doing the things that I know I have to do. So you find this assumption within. You write it down and you create an affirmation. And you say the affirmation to yourself directly, provided that it resonates with you, or indirectly in many different ways, and perhaps even created subconscious mind audios or consume information that support that particular affirmation, information that is available in the five sensory world created by others that have the similar thread of conversation in relation to your affirmation. Then what you notice is that you have a loving absorption to what you know you have to do to the realization of what you desire to experience. You find yourself from a flow-based perspective or autotelic, which is divine will, automatically doing those things. You have now successfully, through the power of affirmation, changed your inner conversation within. You'll notice that when you are experiencing that particular task or project or whatever it is that you have to do, you'll find yourself more encouraging and wanting to do it. As a result, the behaviors will flow. You will find yourself doing it because you want to do it. You realize you've always wanted to do it, and you won't experience as much resistance. Eventually, the resistance will go away, and you'll find yourself wanting to do that more so than anything else, provided that it is what you really know you have to do in relation to your vision, your outcome. That is what she means by loving absorption and undivided attention. The man who achieves success has the fixed idea of success, okay, fixed idea, the exact vision of what we desire to experience. What would it look like if it was true? Selecting from what we call imagination from the unseen reality, as in all things exist, and we are selecting from the unseen reality in our imagination and fixing our mind on that idea, affirming it on the subconscious as success. If it is founded on a rock of truth and righteousness, it will stand. If not, it is built upon sand and washed into the sea, returning to its native nothingness. Thus, we commit to what our heart desires. If a person says, this is how you should live your life, you might find yourself forcing the idea in your imagination, and you feel not resonant with that. What we want to do is find our own ideas, our own inspiration within. This is easier to commit to because we have the ability to go in and find what we truly love. What we truly love is built on a foundation, as she says, on a rock of truth. And rightness, it will stand. So out of all the particular experiences in this life, we're always going to lightheartedly commit to that which we truly love. And that is what we call the heart desire. Every day, examine your consciousness and see just what you are preparing for. So the goal is to discover these heart desires within. Affirm these heart desires in the subconscious via imagination. And allow ourselves from the inspiration and intuition within, which we're going to talk about in a moment as well as working with affirmations and self-talk to flow ourselves to the realization. This may involve certain behaviors, capabilities, environments that facilitate. You'll find yourself in these particular circumstances, these outer world experiences, through the changing, or more specifically put, rearranging of the mind within to reflect the outcome of what you had imagined. Every day you have the opportunity and the ability to observe what you are thinking. 
what you are interpreting about people, environment, circumstance, and information. And what you are interpreting is revealing about what is within. And we can change the contents within via affirmation, via self-talk, via revision, or via placing ourselves in an environment that are facilitating and supporting, such as the mastermind principle from Napoleon Hill or any kinds of environments that support. You feel more inspired in those environments. Use what you have with wisdom and it opens the way for more to come to you. After you have selected exactly what you want to experience, you are now on the journey to the realization of that particular experience. You are on the road to success. Through loving absorption and undivided attention, which is found by changing how we relate to ourselves, others, people, environment, circumstance, outer world, five sensory world, we find ourselves doing the things, experiencing the things that are in harmony and in relation to what we desire to experience, the end result. And from the being affirmation, as in living it from that perspective, in that way, you find more wisdom within of how to further tap into what we call inspiration and intuition, which guides the way. A well-known man who has become a great power in the financial world said to a friend, I always follow intuition and I am luck incarnate. In other words, this individual creates his own luck by following his intuition. Upon reflection, you'll realize that what had appeared to be lucky by others was because you did it in a way that is not known by many, but rather by following your hunches and inspiration and guidance within via intuition. Also found in what I spoke about in the last video, that's why I recommend watching it, the inner voice, which is distinct from mental chatter. It is the true voice that guides you to the destination on the road to success, which you have already started the journey on, Otherwise, this information would not be available to you. Information presents itself to contribute and support you to the destination, either externalized on the screen of space to guide us or revealed within via inspiration and intuition in our imagination or our inner conversations. She says, inspiration, which is divine guidance, is the most important thing in life. So again, inspiration which leads you to your heart desires, which leads you to the fulfillment of your heart desires, is what is referred to here as divine guidance from within. It is found within. People come to the truth meetings for inspiration. I find the right word will start divine activity operating in their affairs. The right word, our choice of words. And by choice of words, we're talking about the inner conversations. Every day we have an opportunity to look and observe our inner conversations and ask ourselves, as a result of our inner conversations, what are we imagining? What we are conversing about within is what we are imagining. And as stated in the last discussion, to the concept of the idea that we are all imagination and the screen of space is an externalization of our imagination, then what we are conversing about ourselves, even though we think we are talking about other people or circumstance and information, is actually revealing what we are going to create in our own experience on the journey to fulfillment of what we desire to experience. So thus, we want to go further and deeper within and reveal the inspiration and intuition that guides us. She says, faith is expectancy. According to your faith, be it unto you. We might say, according to your expectations, be it done unto you, so what are you expecting? Another way of looking at it and saying is, what are we imagining? Or what are we inner conversing about? Are we identifying with the mental chatter and encouraging it and thus imagining the mental chatter and thus experiencing it in the five sensory experience? Or are we encouraging the inner voice, the true inner voice? thus imagining that and experiencing it as a harmonious journey towards a destination. Again done within. What are we expecting? Now, Neville had mentioned this in one of his lectures, one of my favorite lectures, actually. Faith is loyalty to the unseen reality. Loyalty to the unseen reality, as in you know it exists in 
your imagination because imagination reveals what exists that the five sensory experience might not see right now. But as we continue to live in the end, dwell in the end, which is realizing that everything is contributing and changing our inner conversation to reflect that everything is contributing, we experience the realization of that faith. So she says, faith is expectancy. And Neville says, faith is loyalty to the unseen reality, which is that once you know that it exists in your imagination, you have seen it in your imagination, you will experience it in the five sensory experience. And what we do on the journey is change our inner conversations about, which are guided from within. The inner conversations, the realization after selecting that state of mind, which represents the ideal outcome, it's guided from within via inspiration and intuition. She says, we hear people say, we expect the worst to happen or the worst is yet to come. They are deliberately inviting the worst to come. Observe the words that you are consuming based on other people's opinions. Observe the words that you are encouraging within, which may be a affirmation suggestion from the words of others or past programming within that we call mental chatter. And ask ourselves, are we expecting the worst to happen in relation to our vision? Why is this the case? Where did this come from? Let's put off the former conversation and create the affirmations that affirm, as she says here, we hear others say, I expect a change for the better. So rather than saying we expect the worst to happen, we say it internally, internally. We don't need to argue with anyone externally. All of this happens within. I expect the change for the better. They are inviting better conditions to their lives, into their lives, more specifically put. They are externalizing from within, from the inner conversation, which is impressing on the subconscious via the imagination from the affirmation of I expect a change for the better to externalize in the outer world as better conditions. In other words, she says here, change your expectations and you change your conditions. Expectations are revealed via our inner conversation, our affirmation, our mental chatter, or accurately, and what we're interested in, our true inner voice, that from intuition, inspiration, speaks from a place of intuition, spirit of harmony with all, and guidance to the destination, says things like, I expect a change for a better, or more and more so each day, there will be a change for a better, or I'm realizing how this circumstance is actually contributing as an opportunity, and it is not an obstacle unless I choose to believe it to be that way, thus imagine it to be that way. And I choose not to imagine it to be that way. She says, the imagination is man's workshop. Very important. The imagination is man's workshop. The scissors of the mind, where he is constantly cutting out the events of his life, happening via the imagination. The superconscious is the realm of inspiration, revelation, illumination, and intuition. It comes from beyond, from the depths of our being, from the divine realm. That is the realm of the superconscious, where our desires come from, where inspiration comes from, when intuition comes from, where the revelation and the ideas of what we will experience in the five century world as a vision flashes in our mind is received within from the superconscious, which is connected to the subconscious. The superconscious is also connected to the subconscious minds of all. You juggle with the intellect. The intellect would say, times are hard, no activity in real estate, don't expect anything until the fall of 1958. Well, this book was written back in the days, so that's why we say 1958. With the spiritual law, there is only the now. Always remember this, with the spiritual law, there is only the now. We can dwell in the past and thus re-externalize past former conversation, or we can be in the conversation of the vision in this eternal now. With the spiritual law, there's only the now. Before you call, you are answered for. Time and space are but a dream. And your blessing is there waiting for you to release it by faith and the word. So we have been given the gift of speech and mind. 
that is the gift given to us, speech and mind, born into this world with these gifts. And our goal is to guard the mind, keep the garden of the mind, via the word. And we do this through our desires, selecting something that we desire. And through the journey to the fulfillment of the desire, we purify our mind by evolving our word within. And then observe as the journey externalizes to the destination as the result, as well as a higher degree of purification of the mind. We can learn to control our thoughts in the same way by gentle determination, not force. See, all of this is done from a place of cause and effect reflection, which is flow based fun. I use the word inner bliss as in the realization of what you desire to experience is blissful. The journey is blissful. And as you believe, so it shall be done unto you. So thus the cause and effect reflection and changing the assumptions within is also blissful. It could be both force-based or flow-based. The choice is really based on the assumptions within. We take an affirmation and repeat it continually while our thoughts are on the rampage. We cannot always control our thoughts, but we can control our words. And repetition impresses the subconscious, and we are then master of the situation. So we create affirmations. We say them regularly. And we say them in a way that relates to how we desire to experience the journey to the fulfillment of what we desire to experience. These affirmations also change through the imagination. Thus, the affirmations are what we are imagining. Our identity, our beliefs, our assumptions, how we believe ourselves to be in relation to people, environment, circumstance, and information, how we believe people, environment, circumstance, and information relates to us thus creating a higher degree of harmony between the inner world and the outer world, the outer world being the five sensory screen of space. Now, when she says you cannot always control your thoughts, it's important to reflect, say, on your journey to realizing the fulfillment of what you desire to experience. You are interacting with people. You notice that you have thoughts, that they dislike you, that they treat you unfairly, and they are rude to you. You reflect within and you ask yourself, is this a recurring pattern of thought processes that are occurring within my own mind, thus playing out in the five sensory experience via what I'm imagining? If you identify that this is the cause of this particular phenomena, what you then do is you change your interpretation, thus indirectly controlling your thoughts. You'll find that they change, they reflect the mood within you, the interpretation of them that is revealed via your inner conversation, via your thoughts. Now, as you continue to affirm those changes, you see them change and you affirm that they are changing. You further affirm that true inner voice conversation that is in relation to what you desire to experience. Thus, indirectly, you are controlling your thoughts. Now, if any other negative thoughts show up for whatever the reason may be, we continue this process again and again and again. The constant guarding of the mind will further reveal where the sources of the thoughts are coming from, suggestions or inner world past dwellings or past experiences, and be able to change those thoughts to reflect the accuracy of what we desire to experience via our inner conversations or otherwise known as affirmations. What are we imagining? Now, the repetition of this impresses the subconscious. You can say the same affirmations, or you could take the same affirmation and break it down into many different perspectives. For example, perhaps the affirmation is, more and more so each day people respect me wherever I go. We can break it apart into multidimensional affirmations. We can say, more and more so people are reflecting the mood within me. More and more so people accept that I accept myself. More and more so, people treat me kindly because I am a kind person. More and more so, each day, people show up that are in direct alignment with bringing forth my vision because I maintain a lighthearted state of mind, of consistency, as she puts it here, loving absorption of undivided attention. You can say, as a result of my loving absorption, I bring forth that what I love. And that what I love reflects the love I have for myself. 
the people, environment, and circumstance reveal how the love that they share are the gifts sent to me as a result of calling forth within via my inner voice and conversation, which is a result of the evolution of my voice, which is then what is impressed on my subconscious via imagination and thus reflected accordingly in the treatment style that I believe that they treat me, which is one of harmony, which is one of peace. I see this increasing more so each day. She says hundreds of people choosing the wrong gifts because they were not listening to their intuitive leads. The idea is that from the superconscious we receive within, via our intuition, via inspiration, the gifts, our heart desires, that we are destined to experience in the five sensory experience. And by wrong things, it's not really what they truly love. It is rather what they on the surface believe that they want, but in a deeper level, subconsciously, they don't really want it. And as a result of it, more convolution and complexity is being experienced on the journey. When the person truly discovers what they love to do, which also happens to be what they're good at, which also happens to be in the spirit of harmony with all people, environment, circumstance, and information, they realize that this is the way that they are truly meant to live. Now, the former conversation that of mental chatter might deny this assumption in many different ways. That's why the ongoing journey of cause and effect reflection and purification of the mind is important. As we remove the disempowering programming regarding ourselves, our heart desires, the gifts that are meant for us, and our relationship with people, environment, circumstance, and information, we begin to understand what we truly desire and thus work with what we truly desire, committing then yet again to that which we truly love. As Steve Jobs said, and I always bring up his commencement speech, and I'll bring it up again. He says, follow your heart and intuition. They somehow already know what you are destined to become. Everything else is secondary. This is because that is your gift to others. By living this way, you also inspire others. You help others. You also live the way you are meant to be. And you then realize that the power is found within your own inner dialogue, which is further facilitated by encouraging affirmation and conversation about how the gifts that you truly desire are meant for you, and thus you are on the journey for the fulfillment of these particular gifts, experiencing them in the five sensory reality. Now that stated, whatever shows up on the journey, it's easier then to change the interpretation about those particular circumstances, the information, how we relate to people, environment, etc., to be accurate and in alignment through affirmation to what is true about those experiences in relation to our vision. She says, no matter what you are doing, ask for guidance. So we ask for guidance within. And ask and ye shall receive. When we ask, it is always received. When we ask, we ask within. And it can be received within via intuition and inspiration, or it could be experienced externalized in the externalized form as signs and synchronicities or others that provide inspiration and intuition. But the source and the cause is within. The asking happens within. She says it saves time and energy and often a lifetime of misery. All suffering comes from the violation of intuition. Unless intuition builds the house, they labor in vain who built it. Get the habit of hunching, then you will always be on the magical path. And as quoted in the Bible, she states, and it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. And while they are speaking, I will hear. Working with the spiritual law, we are bringing to pass that which already is. So as mentioned, when working with our imagination, we are selecting from that which already exists. It may not experience as existence in the five sensory world yet, but it is in the sixth sense which has access to the unseen reality via the imagination. In the universal mind, it is there as an idea, but is crystallized on the external by a sincere desire. And we can increase to a level of what Napoleon Hill calls burning desire, which is not done from a place of resistance or force, by translating all meaning of what we are experiencing on the journey to bring us into what we call loving absorption through affirmation and undivided attention. Otherwise, I also call this unwavering, lighthearted focus. If you are convinced that you are a failure, 
you will be a failure until you impress the subconscious with the conviction that you are a success. This is done by making an affirmation which clicks. So we might have within ourselves a lot of programming that prevents us to realize that we already are a success. And that by selecting the state of mind of success, we experience the journey of revelation of that success. To the power of affirmations, creating affirmations and selecting them and affirming them, we experience what we call here, as she refers to, as the click. Now, Neville refers to this as it is already done. So if you select in your imagination and you experience that imaginal act and get the sensation of it is already done, then you have selected that scene in your imagination and you are on the journey to the fulfillment. The same is to be said about affirmation. When an affirmation is a true affirmation and an empowering affirmation, one that actually works, we start to believe it more so. That's what is referred to as the click. Or we could believe it instantaneously. That's why crafting affirmations that are resonant with you are very important. We may be inspired by the affirmations of others, but more accurately put, we are finding our affirmations within via our intuition and inspiration by building a relationship with our true inner voice, which is distinct again from the mental chatter. The reason it is necessary to make an affirmation is because repetition impresses the subconscious. Every day, choose the right words, the right thoughts. So you could work with formal affirmations. As mentioned, there are four modalities of working with the subconscious that have always served me since 2004 when I first came across the auto-suggestion principle in Think and Grow Rich. And I built upon them and I continuously use them and they work universally all the time. They are self-talk, revision, subconscious mind audios, and environment. I did a discussion on them. I'll put a link in the description. You can watch that video. Whether you work with affirmations or you observe and adjust your inner conversation, what you're really doing is practicing the choice of right words. Now, through this, we are going to experience less resistance on the journey. We are removing resistance by expressing the change in the outer world through the inner change that has happened through our inner conversations. That's why she says here, non-resistance is an art. The art is painting reality from the words within. When acquired, the world is yours. So many people are trying to force situations. Your lasting good will never comes through forcing personal will. We're working with divine will. Divine will provides the hunches and inspirations and affirmations and suggestions and beliefs within. We receive them from within, divine guidance. As she stated in one of her previous books, I can't remember what book it is, heaven is the realm of perfect ideas. And all of this is discovered via intuition within. And when you listen to your intuition, you're going to allow the intuition to transcend five sensory experience and meaning. And so you'll be able to reassign new meaning to five sensory experience to override it, to reflect accordingly via your inner voice conversations. The intuitive person is never undecided. He is given his leads and hunches and goes boldly ahead, knowing he is on the magic path. Talk about your affairs as little as possible and then only to the ones who will give you encouragement and inspiration. Now, this is important because when we receive the affirmations within, when we receive the accurate inner voice conversations, it may be different than the kind of narrative or conversation that we see in the five sensory experience. If we have doubts about what we have received within, and we have a conversation with a person about our inner voice or our assumptions that are received within, the doubts may externalize as them revealing the doubts within by what they say. They are not trying to hold us back, but rather revealing the doubts within. And if this adds more complexity and confusion, then it's best just not to talk about it. And finally, as the epilogue, which is a grand summary of this entire conversation, she says, your success and happiness in life depend upon the watchman at the gate of your thoughts. You have the conscious ability to select your thoughts. As much as some past information has caused us to assume that we don't, realize that that is where the power is and you have the power. It is yours. We can only misassign the power through our beliefs and assumptions, but we have 
always had the power. By affirming the idea that you have the power within by observing the thoughts that you take in. And also observing what you are encouraging and imagining, thus reflecting it on the screen of space via the inner dialogue and selecting the true inner voice conversation of intuition and inspiration. So again, your success and happiness in life depend upon the watchman at the gate of your thoughts. Sooner or later, crystallize on the external. Watchman of the gate of your thoughts, inner dialogue. Receive within the true inner voice conversation, which is riddled with inspiration, intuition, and transcending the meaning of the five sensory experience, transcending the beliefs and assumptions that you might have experienced before and identified with to be more accurate and in alignment and thus create affirmations with them and work with those affirmations and observe as it crystallizes or externalizes in five sensory reality more so each day as your destination and a fulfilling journey to the realization or experience to your destination. So thus the secret door of success or the secret door to success is found within. It is found with your desire. It is found via your inspiration. It is found via your intuition. And thus living it, you reflect it and experience it as the following. The road to success is a straight and narrow path. It is a road of loving absorption of undivided attention. If you want to copy this mind map, the link is in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'll talk to you soon. Take care.